Good lord, there are way too many sheep in here. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 3 of my Minecraft survival series. Last episode we built this nice miner's cottage and set up strip mines for each resource as well. Damn, this looks pretty nice. But as you would have seen in the last episode, we now have a bit of a sheep problem. Finally. Boy, it's loud in here. So that's what 413 sheep looks like. I vowed to protect my sheeple. And in the process, I've just put 413 sheep in this tiny little pen. So because it's basically a part of the law now, in this episode, we're going to make the temple of the sheep. Well, yeah, while that sounds all well and good, how am I going to go about it? Well, we can break it up into five main steps. With the first and arguably the most important step, we've got to make the trek up to the temple entrance. I really think the perfect place for this temple is going to be up on the mountainside. Although at the moment if we wanted to get there, we basically just have to scale the side of a cliff. So putting in a path would probably be a pretty good idea. Coming to our storage and grabbing out some cobblestone and some tuff, we can start to carve out this path into the mountain. Yeah, this mountain face is actually going to look pretty cool as a temple entrance. I kind of want the aesthetic of this path to appear as though it's really old and is starting to fall apart. Which should be pretty easy to achieve because technically speaking I don't have to put down as many blocks to achieve that look. And so something sort of like this should work out pretty well. Hey man, nice drip. From the top here, we just need to carve a way through this forest. With the path now in, we can put in some torches to avoid the path getting covered up by falling snow. And now we have a scenic path to take towards where the temple will be. Although step one isn't quite complete yet because I want to put in a couple of extra decorations along this path. Starting off by making a little camp in through here. And then we'll put the fire out as if the campsite has been abandoned or not used for a long time. And I also thought maybe a beacon type thing up the top here would be cool as well. Something sort of just like that. And so now step one is complete. And so before we move on to step two, last episode we bred up a few sheep and well, yeah, it's a little bit squishy in here to say the least. So I think it'd only be right to set up another couple of pens to make these sheep have a little bit more space. So I'll clear some space and put a pen in the back here. Well, this hasn't really gone the way I thought it would. And so now we just have sheep running wild all across the mountain, which is not ideal. We're going to need another couple of pens. Well, that was a mammoth of a job. Now I am become shepherd. Keeper of the sheep. Honestly, at this point, I'm kind of fully committed to the bit. So I'm going to decorate these pens the same way that we decorated our original pens. So we'll chuck in some bushes around for them to chomp on and put in a little water trough as well. And then we can just repeat a similar thing for the other pens as well. And that now brings us to our biggest pen, which I will continue some of the same around through here. Then I also had the thought that because there are so many sheep in here, I could also put a little roof structure for them to have some shelter. So something just nice and simple, use some barrels as some foundations, and then bring some fences on top of each. 
And nothing too fancy. Now we can just put a little lean-to roof over the top, which of course I didn't have enough wood for. If I wasn't a shepherd before, I definitely am now, which means I need to continue to tend for my sheep. And what better way to do that than by growing more food for my sheep to consume? Because it's the only way I know how, we'll be feeding our sheep with wheat, which means that we need to plant some fields to be able to take care of our sheepies. We can also breed up the 25 sheep for the 25 subscribers from the last episode. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to make sure that you don't miss out on a single video. Well, I mean, I guess I can take this skin off now. Man, this feels so much better. Although I will admit that robe was pretty freeing. And moving on to step two, I want to make the entrance for our temple. So for this temple entrance, what I'm currently thinking is I want to make a sheep face on the outside of the mountain. So the face will sit somewhere around here with the entrance to the actual temple just below that. And for this sheep head, I'm going to take some inspiration from Grian's Chamber of Sea Critters from the most recent Hermitcraft season. If you don't know what I'm talking about there, I definitely recommend you go check out his videos. And so the sheep head up on this sheer face here should work out pretty well. And so this will be pretty simple, sort of just working off the sheep pixel art and using different shades of stones to hopefully make this look like the Minecraft sheep head. And go down and take a peek. Huh, that's actually turned out better than I expected it to. Cool. Yeah, okay, damn, that looks pretty cool. And so then we can just continue our path up to underneath the sheep head, probably somewhere about there. Now that the path up is complete, I want to work on this main entrance here. So as far as I'm concerned, it's basically Minecraft lore to use spruce whenever you're doing something fancy or medieval. But I just want an arching shape here and we might extend that out one more as well. Okay, cool. And then we'll have our door inset with some stripped spruce going all the way up and down on each side. Although that's one block too high for the pillar. And then we can just put some trap doors along the face like this with a couple of spruce doors at the front. And so something like this looks pretty cool in my opinion. And coming through here, we need to clear out a bunch of space. Yes, this is going to be a massive room, but this is only the main entrance to the temple. Really, New Blinky? All this on episode 3? Yep, that's exactly right. That was a massive hole to dig out. And so now we've just got to figure out what to do with all this space. I do have something in mind, but first I need to repair my tools. Man, I really need to get some mending books. I need to grab some deep slate from in here. Starting off with the floors, of course. I'm thinking I might use some stone bricks. Start off by just making the entire floor stone bricks. I might bring in a little bit of texturing with some andesite, where I'll bring in some stripes like this, alternating with the stone bricks and stop it short along this line where we can then come back in the other direction. Nah, that's not really the effect I was going for. I was a bit worried for a second there, but this is the type of pattern that I wanted to go for. And now if we come along each side and replace all these with stairs, just like that to separate the pattern a little bit more. And I can probably run some water down each side as well. Well, at least the floors started to come together pretty nicely. And because this wall's looking a little bit flat, let's add a little bit of curve to it. Next, I'm thinking I want to bring some pillars up on each corner. But because these look a little bit boring as is, we'll need to add a bit of meat to them. So I'm hoping that adding some stairs and some walls should make it look a little bit nicer. So hopefully something just like that. This temple entrance is really starting to take shape. So now I will instep each of these walls because I have a cool idea for these spots that will again involve the sheep head rock thing. Yeah, damn, this is actually starting to look pretty sick. I've sort of outdone myself here if I'm going to be completely honest. And with that, let's fill in the rest of these walls. I also chucked in the ceiling here and I also put some running water underneath here to give us some soundscapes. 
and that's step two checked off the list. Moving on to step three, I'd like to build a house out the front here for the temple's keeper. Fortunately for me though, I think I'll probably use a similar block palette to what I've used inside the temple so far. So most of our materials should probably be in the chests up in the temple. Grabbing out some spruce, diorite, cobblestone, stone bricks, and andesite. Probably going to need to get some decorative blocks from back at the house at some stage as well. But starting out, I'll just clear out these two trees here. Seeing as I already have an idea in mind for who the temple's keeper is going to be, this house doesn't necessarily need to be that big. I honestly think that this is probably going to be big enough. So I'll switch this out for stone bricks. And I'll chuck in the floor before I put in the walls. But yeah, we'll just bring this up a few blocks and then starting to introduce some of our cobblestone and andesite as we go up. I might expand this just a little bit because it is quite small. So I'll break down this wall and extend this out a few blocks. That's probably a fair bit better. And using spruce stairs for a trim, like with the rest of our build so far, add in a nice and simple slope to the roof. I've done it again, that needs to be lowered by a block. Yeah, that's a bit better. And so now we'll continue the trim around. And let's see how it's coming together. Yeah, looking not too bad for a basic shaped house. It'll definitely look better once we've detailed it. So we'll get into some detailing, chuck in some chiseled bookshelves, some shelving, and a barrel of course. And coming back to the house to grab a few extra things, like some flowers, which we'll also need to get some clay for and some paper to make some books with. Kind of love that snow's already covered up some of the path up here. Look, I know it's only a small build, but surely I can't be the only Minecraft YouTuber that enjoys doing interiors. Speaking of interiors, we need to go get the Temple's Keeper to live in here. So we're going to go off on an adventure in some new unexplored land. So I'm currently in search of a village, and I bet you can't guess what for. And here's village number one just on the horizon. Damn, half on the ground, half up on the hill. And another village right next door. Might suss out this savannah village first. Oh my god, we're in luck. <laughs> so yeah, I was basically just trying to find a Suki, which we've just found. For any of you that don't know, Suki is my cat in real life, and she's white just like this white cat. So now she can help me finish looting this village. Oh my god, I actually can't believe how lucky I got on that. Because you guys can't see my face, I've got a smile from ear to ear right now. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Good kitty. I'm also hoping to find a saddle in one of these villages. Don't mind if I do. Okay, well, no luck in village numero one. Let's see how we go with the Plains Village instead. Damn, no saddles here either. That's okay, because we got the main thing we were looking for. And back to the Sheep Temple we go. So let's get the Temple's Keeper into her new home. Good girl, Suki. And Wandy T has arrived. What have you got for us today, buddy? Oh yeah? Cherry saplings? I'll be back in a minute. Also grab a name tag while we're here for Suki. And so I'll grab that cherry sapling, please, Wendy T. And Suki, here is your name tag. And a pink collar for good measure. It's funny because she's literally sitting on a white bed as I'm recording this. But with that sorted, that is step three now complete. For step four, we've got to move back inside the temple and actually carve out the temple past the entrance here. So I'm thinking we'll start just with a staircase down. Oh cool, we're above a cave here. That will mean that we've got a lot less digging to do. So now I'll start to chuck in some walls because I want the roof to line up with the floor up here. Yeah, okay, so we're almost at the right height here. Yeah, great, and we've hit the edge of the mountain. We'll see what we can manage to work out here. And here's the cave that's going to turn into our temple, I guess.
And would you believe it, we now have the staircase done. After, of course, fixing up the outside with the mountain. And now that we're down here, it might be a good idea to define an area for the temple. And with the area of the temple now marked out, sort of goes around like this on both sides and then steps in at the end. Our next step is to clear out this cave. Given how I've already had to repair both my pickaxes when doing this front entrance, I think it honestly might be a better idea to get some more pickaxes rather than spending three diamonds on each pickaxe to repair. So grabbing the diamonds to craft two new pickaxes and giving a level 30 enchantment to both of them. We've now got our Mustang and Sally, excuse me, just coming through. Yep, there we go. Ready to clear out this mountain. Okay, well that has brought us to one hollowed out temple room and three very broken pickaxes. So to fill in the walls and the floor, we're going to need to go and make another diamond pickaxe. So let's start off by finishing the floor. Now we can move on to detailing some of these walls. I'm planning on going even more basic for the walls down here, but you'll see why in a moment. Now with both walls in place, I can fill these spaces with a couple of sheep statues. So taking similar inspiration as before, I can use the same block palette as with the sheep heads that we put in. And I've just got to be careful not to make these too tall or too big. All right, this whole thing's a little bit too high, so we're going to have to sink it into the floor a little bit. And this is hopefully a better height. And that is exactly the vibe I was going for. A large imposing sheep. Now I've just got to go get some more diorite. Back on up to the temple we go to finish off the other statue. And voila, we have two sheep statues. That now brings us to the final wall and the roof. For this wall, we'll probably just carry on with the same sort of style that we've got, mixing up between the stone bricks, stone brick stairs, and stone brick walls. And would you look at that? Step four is almost complete. We just need to get a sheep for our throne here. Hey you, you're coming with me. Come along, sheep lord. And well, now step four is complete. Before moving on to step five, I really need to get some mending books for my pickaxes because we're gonna be digging out some more cave. And well, yeah, you guys know what the state of my pickaxes is currently. So heading back to the same two villages that we found Suki at. And now time for my most favorite part, Stripping a villager of its human rights and forcing it to live out the rest of its days serving me only to sell mending books. But first we've got to re-roll it. Okay, there we go. That didn't actually take too long. So we'll just sell this man some sticks and at least lock in this trade because I don't particularly feel like going through that again. And well, now we've just got to conform to capitalism and sell some more sticks. And that's one mending book. And hello, book number two. All right, well, that's all I came here for. See you next time. So mending on the first one. And then I want to combine these two. So we'll go mending there. And we just need 39 levels to combine the two. So let's go pay our skeleton spawner friends a visit. Well, two hours of AFKing later, and we've got one of our pickaxes repaired and enough levels to combine the other two. Cha-ching! And then we can go repair this fella. 
Okay, cool. I'm all ready to move on to step five now. Speaking of step five, we're going to be putting some farms into the temple. Lucky me, I get to do some more digging now. Starting with a staircase coming down. And we can put some walls around the top bit here as well, just to keep it safe. To which brings us to clearing out more cave area down here. Although at least this time I have two efficiency five mending pickaxes to help me get it done. All right, cool. We've got the base shape set out and now I can start to mark out where our farms are going to go behind these walls. I'm not going to be going for anything crazy here. Just a sugar cane and bamboo farm. Should now hopefully have everything we need. So down here with our bamboo, we'll place in all of our pistons with observers facing out and then a line of redstone behind to connect everything up. We can then start to close this up while of course keeping everything neat and tidy as I like to do. We can then come in the back here and add some torches in. And seeing as the bamboo is now starting to grow, we should set up a collection system as well. And so the item collection system set up with an automatic minecart unloader. And we've already got a fair bit of bamboo growing too. So we can just finish off the rest of this farm. Well, with the bamboo done and now producing pretty well, we can set up the sugarcane farm on the other side here. And so pretty much the exact same thing with the addition of water to grow the sugarcane. And now both farms are in place. I was actually inspired on this design by Tango Tech in the current season of Hermitcraft. Anywho, we want to finish off this bottom bit. And so with the walls done, all it's left to do is to tidy up this place. And here is the Temple of the Sheep all tidied up. Coming through our entrance hall and down the stairs into the main hall where things are looking a bit bare at the moment, but I do have some ideas for decorating and detailing that I'll save for another episode. And down the bottom in our farm area as well, where again, some more detailing might be needed in a later episode, but we've got pretty good production. Well, that'll just about do it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.